Today we're going to cover the standing seam module condition property view. Now you'll notice that this is going to look a little bit different than the traditional standing seam condition that you would be using. The reason being is because this is part of the specific standing seam module which allows you to print your cut lists as well. So when you open up your condition properties, the first thing you'll notice is your description. Again, just go ahead and change that description to be whatever you want it to be for this condition. Below that, you have your six C fields. These are user definable fields in which we can make modifications or use them in formulas if need be. Continuing down and you run into your first panel information field. Now the first thing we're asking is what's the manufacturer? Click your three dotted button and choose the any option that's out here. If you don't see an option out there that you need to have, feel free to click the blue plus and go ahead and create that as a new option for yourself. Continuing down, now you have the panel width. This is going to be the flat portion of the panel that's actually going to be laying against the deck of the roof. Continue down, and now you have the stretch out. So this will be the total stretch out of material that you're going to need here when creating this panel. This additional length field here is just adding a, whatever inch increment that you type in there to the total length of panel. For example, if you measured your panel and it was 21 feet, and you had three inches in there as added length, what it's gonna do is it's gonna produce a 20 foot, three inch panel for you. So that way you can have some additional material to be able to make some infield adjustments if needed. Continuing down, you have your T panel. So in this case, it's the style of panel you're working with. You can click your three dotted button and go in and choose different options if you needed to. If you're gonna be using battens, we do have this use battens and, and the batten type here. Um, most of the time I see that get turned off, but if you do end up needing battens for your standing seam system, feel free to go ahead and turn that on and populate that information. The next field we have are panel extras. In this case, you're just calculating roof height. This is an information only field. It's not doing anything other than that for you. The ridge cutback would be adding additional inch increment so that way when you get your panel out to the field and you have to make some cuts for around the ridge, you have a little bit of extra material there. The eave hem is the same thing as the ridge cutback. It's just being calculated at the eave rather than at the ridge. Hip valley extra is the same as your ridge cutback and your eave hem. It's just additional material so that way when you're making your cuts in the field, you're not gonna be short on material. The panel length increment this is basically saying that as you measure, for example, if you were to measure a 21 foot one inch panel, we're gonna go ahead and round you up to a 21 foot three inch panel. So that way it makes it easier for your cut list and it's gonna combine like panels together. It's also gonna reduce the number of panel classifications that you're gonna have out in that cut list. So it's gonna condense that list down to make it easier to manage for you. The minimum panel length, this is basically saying, hey, when I measure, I don't want a panel to be under a specific length. In most cases, you'll see that panel length is three, and that's usually what we have in there as our default, and that's just so that way anything that's measured under a three-foot panel will actually be rolled out into a three-foot panel for you, and that's what's going to be calculated. Again, this is just one of those tools that we use to help reduce the number of panel options you're going to have presented on that cut list. Continuing to the right, now you're getting your clip information. So here under clip type, you can choose to change this out or you can leave it generic like we have here as clip. Continuing down, it's asking you how often are you gonna be putting those clip based on a, an inch increment. So in this case, we're saying every 18 inches along the panel, we're calculating a clip. Continue down, it's asking us how many fasteners per clip we're calculating. So here we're saying two fasteners per clip, which in that clip is every 18 inches. The length of that fastener is a 7 8 inch fastener. The fastener type is a screw. And continuing down and you have your pieces per carton. If you leave your pieces per carton zero, we'll give you a per piece pricing option on the pricing screen. If you leave it in here as a box count, we'll give you a per box count pricing on the pricing screen. And then the final option you have here are extra clips per panel. Ultimately, if you wanted to make sure that you weren't going to run short, you could throw in, hey, for every, you know, every panel, I want you to add an extra clip or add an extra two clips. That's simply all this field here is doing is it's just giving you additional clips per the number of panels you have. The next tab you have at the top is your insulation tab. And this is just so that way you can calculate any substrate board or any insulation that you may need on your project. Feel free to fill this out. 
ultimately, you can turn on any field that you need. Layers would be how many layers of border you're putting down. In this case, we're gonna do one. It's gonna be half inch. It's gonna be a four by eight piece of dens deck. And then I could go set my fasteners up as well. But as for the standing seam general tab condition properties, that's how you'll go through and fill that information out. If you do have any additional questions or you run into any issues while setting this up on your own, please feel free to give us a call on the tech line and we'd be happy to assist you in any way we can. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.